Good evening to each one of you. Thank you for joining the earnings conference call of ICICI Lombard for quarter three and nine months financial year 2024. I would like to wish you and your family a great 2024 ahead. While we had a brief interaction in the last quarter, I am happy and excited to engage with you all in my new role. I would like to take the first few minutes to share my vision on the journey ahead for our company. I firmly believe we are in the midst of exciting times, both as a country and as an industry. India is expected to be the fastest growing economy globally. Insurance sector is our, in the country continues to provide a multi-decadal growth opportunity supported by the regulatory commitment to enable insurance for all by 2047. In my view, this will unleash tremendous positives for the industry in time to come. As a company, we will continue to create newer value pools in the industry and maximize our participation in the existing ones. And I believe we can achieve this through our vision of one aisle, one team. Now let me give you a brief perspective on our vision of one aisle, one team. Over the years, the company has created multiple functions, teams, to access various business opportunities available. This was an approach which worked well for us in that phase of our journey. However, the present scenario is fast evolving and dynamic due to which the existing way of functioning inhibits us from leveraging the combined strength of the organization. Keeping this in mind, we have decided to bring a conscious shift in a core philosophical approach. We aim, we aim to transcend functional silos and convert the entire organization into a united team working towards a single organizational purpose. Simply put, it implies when ICSA Lombard wins, everyone wins. This will be a core cultural anchor, and every decision that we take, whether strategic or tactical, will be guided by this. I'm excited to share that we have already taken early steps to align our organization to this in letter and spirit. However, as we embark on this journey, we will continue to focus on market opportunities and leverage our existing distribution channel. We have over the years followed a customer-centric approach and will continue with our overarching philosophy of balancing growth and profitability. Let me now give you a brief overview of the industry trends and developments that we have witnessed in the past few months. Post this, our CFO, Mr. Gopal Balachandran, will share the financial performance of the company for the quarter and nine months ended December 31st, 2023. Domestic GDP grew by 7.6% during quarter ended September 30th, 2023, indicating strong growth primarily driven by the government infrastructure push. Healthy balance sheets of banks and corporates, improving business sentiments and rise in public and private capex should boost, boost capex activity going forward. Broader economic activity indicators like GST collection, EVA bills, generation, manufacturing, PMI, non-food credit growth indicate robust demand in the economy. However, the headwinds for domestic growth can emerge from weak external demand, tight financial conditions, and geopolitical tensions. As we speak, India is globally the fastest growing auto market and is the third largest in terms of sales volume. As per CM, in nine months, 2024, new private car sales continued to have robust growth despite the higher base, with over 3.1 million vehicles being sold, mainly driven by festive, festive demand. For nine months, 2024, 13.5 million two-wheelers were sold, also helped by uptick in rural demand. For the full year, the sales are expected to cross pre-COVID levels. For nine months, financial year 2024, 1.2 million commercial vehicles were sold. This was driven by growth in infra and other core sectors. Health insurance continued to deliver robust growth, remaining the largest contributor to overall industry premium. The commercial lines of business witnessed growth in the line with commercial, current market environment. Further private and public capex involved investment has led to robust growth in the engineering line of business. We expect the commercial line segment to do well in the future on back of overall economic growth and capacity creation. Now, speaking of the performance, the general insurance industry delivered a YOI growth, gross direct premium income 
growth of 14 percent for nine months 2024. Excluding crop and mass sales, the growth is at 15.2 percent for the same period. Overall, the combined ratio of the industry was at 111.9 percent for H1 2024, as against 112.2 percent for H1 2023. Excluding the impact of wage areas for the PSU insurers. Within the industry, the industry combined ratio for motor business was 119.4 for H1 of 2024, as against 123.5 for H1 of 2023. While the improvement in combined ratio is directionally positive, it continues to remain at elevated levels. Further, for nine months 2024, the industry has witnessed three catastrophic events, which is expected to have an impact on financial year 2024 industry combined ratio. Moving to business impact for us in quarter three and nine months for 2024, the company grew at 13.4% during Q3 of 2024, which was higher than the industry growth of 12.3%. For nine months 2024, our growth was 16.5% against the industry growth of 14%. I will now speak about the performance in key business segments during the quarter ended nine month financial year 2024. In the commercial line of business, we have developed strong capabilities on the back of a unique distribution franchise, duly completed, compl uh, complemented by our value added services, risk based underwriting, and large and highly rated reinsurance capacities. As a result, we have consolidated our market position in this business over the last decade. During quarter three financial year 2024, we grew at 12.5% as an industry growth of 13.3%. For nine months, financial year 2024, we have grown by 15.7%, which was higher than the industry average of 9.7%. Motor as a category has always been a focus area for us. As we speak, for the first nine months, we are the second largest motor insurer for quarter three. We achieved an industry leading position in this segment. We have a robust reserving philosophy, which is demonstrated by our reserving triangles and granular data for our portfolio decisions. We'll continue to leverage our strong multi-distributional structure, which enables us to access the market along with the best-in-class claim servicing teams focusing on superlative customer experience. For the motor segment in quarter three, we have registered a growth of 5.6% as against industry growth of 10%. For nine months, financial year 2024, we grew at 7.1% as against the industry growth of 14.3%. The growth in motor segment was aided by strong growth in the new private car segment, which grew at 30% for nine months. Our two-wheeler growth of nine months 2024 was 14%, which was higher than the CM volume growth of 9.9%. As the rural demand picks up, we hope to see the trend continue. The CV segment, as we had mentioned in our earlier call, had no TP price high for financial year 2024, and consequently we focused on targeted portfolio sourcing among the available value pools. For nine months 2024, our mix of private cars, two-wheeler and CV stands at 51.4, 27.8% and 20.8% respectively. We also continue to build efficiency in motor claims. In quarter three 2024, through our preferred partner network, we have been able to service 67% of our agency and direct claims, up from 51% in quarter three financial year 2023. We are excited about the opportunity in the motor segment and will leverage all our existing capabilities as one team to carry the momentum in the coming quarter. The health segment continues to be the fastest growing segment for the industry. We grew faster than the industry both in Q3 and nine months, registering a growth of 24.7% and 29.1% respectively. Our health business, retail health business grew in line with the industry at 19.2% for nine months 2024. To create a sustainable portfolio, we are focusing on preferred geography and hire some insured. Our new business grew at 24.5% during this period. Why we, why we would have liked to grow faster? We will continue to invest by focusing on preferred segment and new product launches in the coming quarter. On bank assurance, we have developed an industry-leading practice which continues to be a strong pillar for our company. 
Our bank assurance and key relationship group grew at 13.6% for the quarter and 21.5% for 9 months 2024. We will continue to deepmine our existing relationships by creating new value streams, which at the same time, focusing on acquiring a new relationship within this ICS, within this ICS group distribution grew at 19.9% for quarter three and 16.9% for nine months. One stop solution for all insurance and wellness needs, the IIT Take Care app has suppressed, surpassed 8.5 million user downloads till date. We continue our growth momentum with 1.6 million user downloads for the quarter. And during the quarter, source premium was over 100 billion, sorry, 1 billion. Through this app, registered a 3.2x increase YOY. Our digital business grew at 39.1% in quarter three and 43% in nine months and constitutes 6.6% and 5.8% respectively of overall business numbers. It would continue to continue to be the key growth driver for us. As I look ahead, I'm personally very excited with this opportunity and committed to creating long-term sustainable value for all our stakeholders. Now I would request Gopal to take you through the financial numbers for the recently concluded quarters and nine months. Thanks, Ajeev, and uh, good evening to all. I will now give you a brief overview of the financial performance of the recently concluded quarter and nine months. We have uploaded the results presentation on our website. You can access it as we walk you through the performance numbers. Gross direct premium income of the company was at Rs 187.03 billion in 9 months FY24 as against Rs 160.48 billion in 9 months FY23. This was a growth of 16.5% which was higher than the industry growth of 14%. Excluding crop and mass health, GDP growth of the company was at 15.6% which was higher than the industry growth of 15.2% in 9 months FY24. GDP was at Rs 62.3 billion in Q3 FY24, as against Rs 54.93 billion in Q3 FY23, a growth of 13.4%. This growth was higher than the industry growth of 12.3%. Excluding crop and mass sales, GDP growth was at 12%, which was again higher than the industry growth of 11.3% in 9 months FY24. Our GDP growth during the quarter was primarily driven by growth in the preferred segments. The overall GDP of our property and casualty segment grew by 12.5% at Rs 16 billion in Q3 FY24 as against Rs 14.22 billion in Q3 FY23. On the retail side of the business, GDP of the motor segment was at Rs 28.42 billion in Q3 FY24 as against Rs 26.91 billion in Q3 FY23, registering a growth of 5.6%. The advanced premium numbers was at, was at Rs 33.04 billion at 31st December 2023, as against Rs 32.89 billion at September 30, 2023. GDP of the health segment was at Rs 13.79 billion in Q3 FY24, as against Rs 11.05 billion in Q3 FY23, registering a growth of 24.7%. Our agents, which includes the point of sale distribution count, was 1,25,088 as on December 31, 2023, up from 1,22,461 as on September 30, 2023. GDP of the retail health segment grew by 16.2% during the quarter three. Group health segment grew by 27.2% during Q3 FY24. As against last year, where we saw no major catastrophic events during the year, during this year, we witnessed three major catastrophes. Cyclone Pipperjoy, North Indian Floods, and Cyclone Michung. Our share of insured losses in these CAT events have been lower than our natural market share. Resultantly, combined ratio was 103.7% for 9 months FY24 as against 104.6% for 9 months FY23. Excluding the impact of CAT losses of Rs 1.37 billion in 9 months FY24, the combined ratio was 102.6%. Combined ratio was 103.6% in Q3 FY24 as against 104.4% in Q3 FY23. Again, excluding the impact of CAT losses of 0.54 billion rupees in Q3 FY24, the combined ratio was 102.3%. Our investment assets rose to Rs 468.67 billion as at December 31, 2023, from Rs 453.12 billion as at September 30, 2023. Our investment leverage net of borrowings was 4.11 times as at 31st December 2023 as against 4.07 times as at September 30, 2023. 
Investment income was at rupees 25.96 billion in nine months FY24, as against rupees 21.6 billion in nine months FY23. On a quarterly basis, investment income was at rupees 8.38 billion in Q3 FY24, as against rupees 7.66 billion in Q3 FY23. Our capital gains. Net of impairment on investment assets stood at rupees 3.95 billion in nine months FY24, as compared to rupees 2.94 billion in nine months FY23. Capital gains net of impairment on investment assets stood at rupees 1.08 billion in quarter three FY24, as against 1.52 billion rupees in Q3 FY23. Our profit before tax grew by 20.6 percent at rupees 18.557 billion in nine months FY24. As against rupees 15.4 billion in nine months FY23, whereas PBT grew by 23.3 percent at rupees 5.74 billion in Q3 FY24, as against rupees 4.65 billion in Q3 FY23. Consequently, profit after tax grew by 8.3 percent at rupees 13.99 billion in nine months FY24, as against rupees 12.92 billion in nine months FY23. Excluding the impact of tax reversal provision in quarter two of FY23. PAT grew by 20.2 percent in nine months FY24. PAT grew by 22.4 percent at rupees 4.31 billion in Q3 FY24, up from rupees 3.53 billion in Q3 FY23. Return on average equity was 17.1 percent in nine months FY24, as against 18.1 percent in nine months FY23. The return on equity average equity for quarter three FY24 was 15.3 percent, as against 14.3 percent in Q3 FY23. Solvency ratio was at 2.57 times at December 31, 2023, as against 2.59 times at September 30, 2023. This continued to be higher than the regulatory minimum of 1.5 times. As I conclude, I would like to reiterate: we continue to stay focused on driving profitable growth, sustainable value creation, and safeguarding interest of policyholders at all times. I would like to thank you all for attending this earnings call, and we will now be happy to take any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Kishan Rungta from MK Global. Please go ahead. Kishan, your line has been unmuted. You may proceed with your question. Kishan Rungta, your line has been unmuted. As there is no response from the current participant, we will proceed to the next question, which will be from the line of Shreya Shivani from CLSA. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers. I have uh, two questions. Uh, so, firstly, uh, excluding all the calamities that we have seen in nine months, your combined ratio has come at 102.3%. Right, and uh, we had earlier given a guidance to reach 102 percent by FY25 end. So clearly, a much better growth in new vehicle sales has, su has supported lower loss ratios this year. Uh, so can you help us understand what is your revised guidance for the next year or next two years on the combined ratio side? Given that uh, we know that you are currently investing in the health portfolio and on technology front, etc. So that will be the first question. And the second question, sir, can you quantify the loss ratio trend for retail health and group health? And uh, there have been some COVID cases uh, in the southern part of the country. How many cases do you have? Is it something that we should be concerned about for the fourth quarter, for the next quarter? Just trying to understand if there's yet another thing that hits us in the next quarter. Okay, uh, I think uh, thanks, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. As far as the uh, combined issue guidance is concerned, uh, then uh, Gopal will share with you in detail the loss issues that you are seeking on the retail as well as the group health side. Uh, uh, clearly, uh, we stick to the guideline of what we have mentioned that we will go to 102 over a period of time. Uh, in terms of revision, clearly from an industry standpoint, again, we are seeing uh, 
uh, Arsenal plays reasonably well, uh, but does this lead to make us believe the guideline can go through a change at this point? Uh, we would say we hold to this. We want to see this trend holding up over next maybe a quarter or two, and then we'll come back to the market if we believe there's a re- uh, revision uh, to be done on that. Uh, in terms of retail and GSX trending wise, yes, we have seen uh, improvement over what we had seen over the last quarter. Gopal will share the numbers in detail. Yeah, sure. So I think uh, so. If you look at the uh, this is the employer-employee or let's say the group health loss ratios for quarter mm-hmm. three of last year, that number was 98.9 percent. This year, quarter three, that number stands at about 93.1. Uh, on a nine-month basis, the again the GHI loss ratios. For last year was 95.9 percent. Nine months of the current year, that number is at 95.8. On retail indemnity, again in the same order. Q3 last year was 68 percent. Q3 this year is at 66 percent. Uh, this is pretty much in line with the range that we have been talking about, which is in the range of between 65 to 70 percent is the threshold that we are comfortable with on the retail indemnity side. And on the nine month basis, again. Retail indemnity loss ratios last year was at 65.2. This year we are at about 65.6 percent. Uh, so that's the breakdown in terms of the loss ratio across different segments. To your last point on uh, COVID claims uh, intimations, I think uh, too early at this point of time we don't see any specific uh, instances or any spikes that we get to see. Uh, obviously we will watch for the development, but nothing uh, at this point of time for us to call out. As of now, no cause of concern. Okay, sure. And the overall combined ratio guidance, I get it right that you may get, come back to us after a, maybe a quarter or two if there's any change in the guidance. For now, it's 102 point, 102 percent for FI25. Yeah, yeah. Right now, it's 102. We're not yeah. changing it. But as I said, uh, seeing how the, the other quarter four goes, we'll come back probably by the year end. Sure, sure. This is useful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanket Goda. From Avendis Spark, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Sanjeev, uh, we we are seeing a little better trend in motor, especially in the month of November and December, compared to the industry. So, so just wanted to understand that um, our strategy with respect to motor has little changed. We, probably we are seeing little growth coming back. Is it because of the uh, pricing environment changing, or or we believe we will be a little more. Uh, aggressive or, or more confident to do motor than than what we were doing in the past. That's, that's my first question. And and, and on similar lines, uh, again again in the third quarter, if I see you seems to have grown re- health retail health especially at a lower rate compared to the industry. I mean, it's, it's despite doing investments, um, uh, we we thought that you will grow at uh, at least 1.2 to 1.3x of the industry. Your growth seems to be broadly uh, lower than the industry, marginally lower than the industry. So I so just wanted to understand. Uh, why the cautious stance uh, being taken with respect to on, on health or, or is it because of the competition on retail health? Uh, that, that's on growth. And and, and, and just, just uh, on, on Gopal, the question is the motor TP loss ratio. Uh, see, mm, that number seems to be again uh, very good at around 62 uh, in, in third quarter or 65 in, in nine months. So So typically we tend to uh, boost up the reserves in, in fourth quarter. The historical trend suggests so. So, so, so is it a case that uh, we will see a similar trend or, or you believe that 65% motor TP loss ratio reported for nine months will, will sustain for the entire year? And, and similarly, if you can com- comment on, on the motor OD2, whether whether this is this is the number what we are looking at, 65. Okay, uh, fair. I will, uh, Gopal will cover the TP part. I'll cover the motor, what is uh, the trend that we are seeing and the strategy going forward. Also on the retail health in terms of the uh, numbers which are relatively subdued, which I also said uh, in my initial comments that definitely would have wanted to grow faster than that. Uh, first thing on the motor, uh, I think we continue to be a very uh, you know competent and uh, relevant player. Uh, we saw in the past also and we have given that guidance that whenever we have seen that kind of a market share being shaped up, it was more conscious because the intensity uh, uh, what we thought would get stabilized did not happen. Uh, so we had taken a step back and let it flow the way it is. Now we have seen some of our key competitors who are ruling in have started uh, p- putting a lot more method in that madness and that has given us an opportunity. That being said, uh, quarter three typically has a tendency to have a lot more new sales in the season and there we do 
uh, end up with the structure that we have, having a lot more uh, to you know uh, achieve as a team on motor uh, overall on market share. But more importantly, the very critical trend which can highlight to all of you is that why uh, why we have been losing bit of a market share. But for the month of December, we have gained a market share of 10.7 percent and we have 10.5 last year in December. So that trend. Uh, is a critical one, and we are well placed in terms of what we believe. If we see this uh, environment operating in a sense, we will not participate in any uh, uh, crazy hunt. If that's what the market leads to, every reason to believe there will be a bit more of semblance. And in that scenario, we will see ourselves exerting a lot more in quarter four in time to come. So that's what we have on motor trend broadly. Uh, on the retail health, a new number. Uh, it's it's not something which we are very uh, you know worried, but yes, we would have loved to go faster. We have taken certain calls in terms of some insure which category of portfolio rights because again, if you know whatever health book that we write, uh, it is for a lifetime durability technically, and we need to hold on to that customer. We had sort of early trends which got us concerned. That being said, our new book has still grown at almost 25 percent, and we do believe that in uh, uh, in time to come, uh, with the sort of investment that we have done with our human capital as well as the product profile, which will also happen over the next couple of quarters from our side, we would be a potent force. And the and the mission that we have shared is firmly on track. These are all conscious calls, which does not deter us uh, in terms of where we stand. Uh, Motor TC, I'll ask Gopal to answer uh, in terms of the details that we had shot. So, Sanket, uh, so my, uh, I think our response will pretty much be on the lines is what I have been talking even in the past uh, few uh, earnings calls. Uh, so, the range within which motor OD loss ratios will operate, I think even last quarters we have been talking about in the range of 60 to 65 percent. I think we pretty much stay on course in terms of uh, that. Uh, part of the range on the motor on damage side. That's largely because I think uh, as an organization, we are kind of focusing a lot more insofar as uh, the claims initiatives are concerned, uh, whether it is in the context of uh, the average claim size, etc., etc. And therefore, to that extent, I think the range that we are comfortable with on motor OD is in the range of 60 to 65. Mm -hmm. On motor third party, I think as we keep saying, uh, again, quarterly numbers may not be the right way to look at, but even on a nine-month basis, I think the number for us stands closer to about 65%. Yeah. There, if we collect, I think the range that we have talked about has been in the range of 65 to 70%, but that again will be a function of what kind of a risk selection that we do. And the point that Sanjeev made, I think clearly as an organization, we are significantly focusing on much more uh, granularization of uh, data, risk selection, uh, and so on and so forth. And therefore, to that extent, the range that we would be kind of looking at operating would be on the third party side between 65 to 70%, which is why on balance, when you look at motor in the aggregate, that mm -hmm. number should be in the range of between 65 to 67%, which if you look at the nine month numbers, the motor at on an aggregate basis, the loss ratio stands at about 65% for this year. So the range that we would be comfortable will be between 65 to 67 on, the, on an aggregate basis. Uh, the only point I would say, Sanket, is uh, in so far as there is no specific trend line for us, in so far as Q4 being seeing any any form of abrasion, I think possibly what you are referring to is uh, maybe a couple of years back. Uh, this is I think financial year 2021, if I recollect it correct. I think there was certain court, Supreme Court judgments that had come through in that particular year. And that's the reason why, not just for ICC Lombard, even at an industry level, companies had to recalibrate their uh, ultimate loss experiences. And therefore, to that extent, one had to take some impact of uh, strengthening of uh, losses. But otherwise, it is not, uh, it is not necessary that uh, we do see any kind of an inch up in so far as third party loss experiences are concerned, so far as quarter four, uh, which you are referring to. Okay, no, no, because I, I saw a similar trend in fourth quarter FI 23 too. So, so that's the reason I was asking the question that that 65 number is sustainable. But you answered that you are looking at a broad number of 65 to 72 to play out for the motor TP loss ratio. Uh, but, but Sanjay, yeah, Sanjay, Sanjay just, just, uh, uh, just to your yeah, comment on motor, yeah. uh, uh, I just wanted to understand, uh, you are saying that uh, in market, overall market competitive environment in motor OD, the relative madness, has, has come off and, and therefore market is more conducive than it was in the past. That, that's the conclusion I should make? 
so uh, i'll tell you i think that will be a relatively sharper conclusion but yes we do see some bit of uh, uh, semblance uh, overall and the lr of the industry has gone down from 93 to 87 and uh, uh, so if that is the indication yes there is a improvement but still if you ask me from an overall standpoint uh, the industry is writing the motor portfolio uh at a you know reasonable triple digit of 100 to 19 so there is a lot more that has to come off uh, and even a private sector is writing at 140 115 uh, it's a it's a long journey uh, but what i can tell you sanket is that when we stand uh, the lens through which we are looking at the market we are reasonably confident of our practice and we will be able to drive value for the organization uh, Uh, in the current environment that is prevailing uh, but long term trends have to manifest you know that the industry numbers come with a lag uh, we are awaiting uh, the nine month numbers for the industry to get a sense which will be able to give you uh, uh, closer to when the, when the financial year gets closed for us at that point of time we can have a much more evolved discussion on this subject perfect perfect sanjeev that's it from my side thank you thank you thanks sir thank, thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order that the management can answer questions from all participants in the queue, we request you to please restrict your questions to two per participant. The next question is from the line of Madhukar Lada from Nuvama Wealth. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good evening. Uh, uh, thank you for this opportunity and congratulations for a good, actually, underwriting performance. Uh, clearly, uh, your you seem to be achieving uh, your guidance uh, sooner than expected. uh so just uh, uh you know a couple of questions uh, on the motor side so i wanted to understand uh, with how is the implementation of the entire loss reporting uh within 6 months time uh, time period uh, how is that progressing and uh, uh you know uh, what is our sort of expectation on that and related question on this is uh is the industry um, you know in this uh, 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 sort of believing that this will get implemented and as a result of that the competitive intensity has had had been high or uh, or are they sort of uh, looking uh, because you know they believe that the ultimate loss ratios will be lower so is that uh, is that the correct way to think about it or is that the way some industry participants are thinking about it and acting in 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 that way and second question on your investment yield that seems to have dropped this quarter so some understanding of what has actually played out uh, of there so uh, th- those two would be my questions Thanks. Sure. So I'll uh, I'll let uh, Gopal come in and I'll give my comments. Yeah, Gopal. Yeah. Yeah. So so Madhukar, I think on the uh, six months loss uh, limitation, uh, I think as we have been kind of uh, indicating that matter still uh, is before the Supreme Court, and uh, obviously we will wait for let's say the verdict to come out. What we understand is I think uh, most of the states seems to be in favor of getting the law of six months implemented. and therefore to that extent uh, i think one would obviously wait and see how the final verdict plays through but the the direction that states want to take is clearly to kind of get a law of limitation in place uh, having said that what could happen let's assume for a moment that if it goes in favor of let's say in line with the six months law of limitation again the impact could vary between players in the market because at an aggregate level for the market obviously there will be some reduction in frequency as we have been explaining consequent to reduction in possible frauds so that's a positive in so far as the overall market is concerned second i think in 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 the context of icsa lombard all obviously we have been inflating uh, reserves with an inflation assumption for icsa lombard at between 12 to 13% this inflation assumption for the market may not be the same and therefore to that extent whenever this will play out the impact could be slightly both beneficial for companies which have been reasonable in their inflation estimations and for us as i said we icis lombard has been inflating at 12 13% market if they have been inflating at a slightly lower number therefore to that extent the impact could be relatively moderate for those set of players so hence in that sense i think it would obviously translate into an incremental business opportunity for us having said that this law of 6 months limitation will be applicable only on a prospective basis which is effective from 
April 1, 2022. So hence, to that extent, uh, is where we would be able to see, as I said, a relative benefit play out for us in the context of the market. Uh, the other thing, what could also happen as a flip side to this is in case if finally this law gets implemented, there is a possibility that next year or maybe in future, the regulator and the government will very closely watch for the need for any kind of a TP price increase. Uh, while last three, four years, again, we have not necessarily seen any kind of a meaningful price change on the third party side. But given the fact that this, this six months law could lead to a positive development from an overall industry standpoint, we may see periods where we may not able to see further increases on the third party pricing. But obviously that's a development that we will again closely watch for in so far as the third party uh, six months law of limitation dynamics is concerned. I'll quickly answer the second question of yours and then maybe I'll, uh, yeah. maybe Sanjeev if you want to kind yeah. of add on. Uh, so on the investment uh, yield, again uh, Madhukar, I think as we have always said, our re rise return is a function of uh, what do we see as uh, interest accruals and uh, what, what is it that we see as uh, capital gain. For us, uh, given the fact that we have been significantly, as we have been explaining even in the earlier earnings calls, the high interest rate regime is something that we have obviously taken advantage of. And hence to that extent, if you would have seen our yield to maturity on the overall book, that currently in fact at December 31 stands at 7.31%. This number, if you recollect, maybe a couple of few quarters back, this number was less than 7% at about 6.92%. So hence, to that extent, we have actually been taking uh, advantage of the higher interest rate regime, and that's kind of auguring well insofar as interest accruals are concerned, where you may possibly see in some quarters possibly a decline in yield is consequent to, let's say, maybe relatively lower levels of capital gain. That's purely a function of what we believe are market opportunities for any gains to be realized. We have generally not seen any instance where we have seen uniform levels of capital gains across quarters. So, in fact, there again, I would urge, similar to the discussions that we have been having on having on the loss ratio side, the yield on the overall portfolio should be looked at again, ideally over on a financial basis, ideally over longer years, but definitely not on a quarter on quarter basis. So, okay, just to add, Madhukar, in terms of the point that you had mentioned on TP, uh, uh, directly, and we all will agree that even when we became part of Motor Vehicle Act, uh, the adoption at the state level would have always gone through its source. But if the intent is to make the uh, overall consumer benefit, these things, in spite of the hiccups, I believe over a period of time will get implemented. Uh, in a country like ours, it will always be a little more complex. Uh, but multiple decisions which have been taken by the body, we remain positively cautious and see that this will flow in that direction over a period of time. But one bigger thing which I want to add, Madhukar, is the way IIB has come up the stream and improved the quality of data sharing that can happen at the industry level. Uh, that part uh, has been transformative. And the level of accuracy and the, the real-time manner in which we can think uh, all of the industry will benefit and be with the, uh, with the level of you know b business that we do and that kind of an accuracy. I mean, you know that banking got transformed and bureau came into place and uh, you could really figure out where what stands. And this data, uh, once it gets created in the form, will also end up you know helping us uh, figuring out uh, you know fraud and so on and so forth. So the base work has got done. Uh, to me, that is also a big positive which can benefit companies like us substantially uh, to drive efficient uh, acquisition in the market. Yes. Thank you, Madhukar. Understood. Understood. Yeah. Just one question on the uh, investment book. Uh, what is the amount of capital gains uh, it, it, this time around, uh, if you could give that versus the last quarter? Uh, the number of capital gains for the quarter three was about 108 crores. That is in that is in quarter three of this year, as against 152 crores, which was the capital gains that we had in quarter three of the last financial year. And last quarter, what was the number? Sorry. Quarter two numbers uh, of capital gains, that number was about uh, 164 crores. Okay. Understood. Got it. Uh, very clear. Thank you and all the best. Thank you, Madhukar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prayesh Jain from Motila Loswal. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, just a few questions. Firstly, 
Adhimish, could you elaborate on your strategy that you were talking about in your initial opening remarks? Uh, could you just elaborate on that uh, new philosophy that you were talking about? Yeah, okay, fair enough. I'll do that. You have a uh, second question also you want to say now, which I can cover, or we'll come yeah. back once I reply on this? No, so the second question was more on motor, motor business granularity. As to, you know, we've seen, uh, you know, faster premium growth with respect to, as compared to the vehicle growth. Uh, and that's possibly because of uh, certain factors like premiumization, share of EVs going higher, CNG share going higher, top models going higher or, you know, automated vehicles going higher. Uh, any of these cohorts where you think that the, you know, particularly EVs, uh, where, you know, your experience would have been kind of, uh, uh, you know, much better than what you would have expected earlier, and you see some price corrections out there, or in with respect to, you know, uh, drive as you use, or the, 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 the pilot project that we were working on earlier, how is that mix evolving? I think some granularity on the motor business will help us kind of look forward into the future on, on this business. And last question was on commission ratio, where, you know, how do you see the commission ratio kind of panning out this quarter? It was at 17% thereabouts. And so how do we look at this ratio from a full year perspective uh, in this year as well as uh, years going on? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Paresh. I think uh, let me just give you a quick perspective of one aisle, one team. Uh, I think as I also mentioned when I spoke earlier in my script, uh, the fact that it's a, a core philosophy change. Uh, we've been in the business for the last 22 years and obviously uh, as an organization we have created multiple centers of excellences uh, and these uh, departments have gone on to deliver a lot more for the organization than one could have thought at the inception level. Uh, but the time has come where we need to, at an overarching level, uh, see that we're able to derive value uh, at a multiplier level uh, for the organization. To give you an example, right, we, we had value-added services which was being driven by us as a company. We have our own patents which are registered uh, to manage risk. But these value-added services used to work more on a project basis with the entities. What we have ensured is that we're getting this embedded with the organization at multiple departments on the commercial side to drive the impact. Uh, another part is on the data analytics side, you know, the data engineers, we do, uh, we do have that particular uh, department which was running and quite effectively, but it was not embedded, they used to operate on a project basis. What we have done is that we have gone ahead and got that department uh, working with business teams to direct reporting in terms of making it work. Uh, so there is a lot of synergy benefits that can be driven on this. Uh, at multiple counts, uh, we would be driving and cross-leveraging it. Uh, our practice, as we have always mentioned, on the corporate side has been very extensive, but our ability to harness, to even procure retail business becomes a significant part of our strategy. It's not even cross-sell, it's actually all embedded solution. Uh, the bulk of the products that we deal with are uh, you know naturally inclined towards type requirement whether it's SMEs on the commercial side or motor health is the only discretionary product uh, that uh, corporates indulge in you will also see product launches in time to come which would be harnessing this opportunity uh, across the segment you large you've got large presence but the consolidated uh, approach that was required uh, mind you but the word of caution is it does not mean that the dissecting of the market and ensuring that the leverage on our distribution will get diluted uh, at any point in time for us. So that's my two bit in terms of, you know, discussing one IL, uh, one team as a, as a company. Now coming on to the motor part of the strategy, as you see, uh, uh, we have seen a significant uh, transformation. Uh, I'll just cover the EV part of business which you spoke about. Uh, from an overall industry penetration level, uh, it has moved. Nine months, the penetration was 3.5. It's gone to almost 4.2 uh, uh, percent for us. Uh, we as a company have a very dominant share on the EV side. Uh, on the private car, which is the passenger's car we're talking about, we have a market share of almost 18 percent. And on two-wheeler, we have a market share of almost 28 percent. Uh, we are obviously bullish, and we do believe that over next uh, couple of years, we will have the inflection point as the infrastructure which is required to see this uh, getting much more, uh, so two points, one infrastructure, other the price point which makes it workable. Uh, 
uh, we would continue to invest and uh, loss ratio yes we do see that uh, it's relatively better but i would not rush to conclude that as yet because these are very early days uh, this will emanate over a period of time uh, but we'll stay invested because this is the category which can rule the market in terms of overall motor uh, clearly quarter three new sales which you spoke about and you read those numbers that we have seen a growth in private car of 30% in two wheeler by almost uh, 14% much higher than what the industry has done uh, uh, again uh, multiple things uh, one we are well equipped uh, in terms of the new business as in when that growth comes back our ability to operate in a decisive manner uh, is pretty much there existing and uh, we do uh, uh believe that uh, this should exhibit over next uh, probably a quarter or so also but we never expected the industry on the private car to grow at a level of almost 7 7 and a half percent because the base for last year itself was high uh, and india has moved on to become the third largest manufacturer of uh, you know overall uh, motor vehicles uh, which itself i think speaks about how the volumes are getting driven another big change which has happened is the suv cars uh, have started dominating which is the average ticket size is high so you would also see that getting exhibited in a number uh, as we speak about the motor growth that will come in so overall we remain uh, positive in terms of driving our motor initiative uh, as a team uh, on the commission ratio i'll ask uh, gopal to just uh, quickly give you an update we have been pretty much within the regulatory limits uh, as prescribed and for the see since the new vehicles are there the expense ratio tends to be elevated historically for the industry and more so for us so prayesh i think again uh, in line with what we have been mentioning given in the earlier earnings call i think a better metric to look at as we keep saying is combined ratios because there will always be businesses which could be high on lr and low on cost of acquisition and the vice versa as well uh, so hence to that extent i think one would urge uh to continue to look at more the uh, combined ratios of the company as a whole having said that i think in line with what sanjeev said if you look at our expense of management uh, numbers uh, as a percentage of gwp uh, this number for the 9 months last year was about 28.6% for the 9 months of current year this number stands at about 28.1% so there has been some improvement in the overall expense of management number but as i said a better metric to look at is more the combined ratios for the company as a whole Uh, this this on this commission ratio Sorry, Gopal we request you to please rejoin the question queue for further questions the next question is from the line of anidesh from investec please go ahead uh, thanks for the opportunity sir firstly on the health insurance uh, uh, we have been investing in that uh, distribution uh, for last uh, almost 2 years uh, but still our growth uh, has been broadly in line with industry or uh, in the month of december we lagged industry Uh, so, uh, what are the aspirations there, and when we think uh, the, the growth uh, pick up in the retail health insurance uh, will be visible in our numbers? Yeah, I think uh, a very valid question, Nitesh. Again, uh, as I was mentioning, given when I was uh, talking earlier in the call, uh, we also uh, would have preferred going faster. Uh, if you see, our growth in quarter one was uh, quite higher than the industry, but we have taken certain calls on the some insured, as well as the you know the nature of new business that we want to procure. These are very finite, definite calls. We are very much on track in terms of. Uh, what we want to achieve uh, our new business side of the call has grown by almost 25% uh, as a company so uh, if you ask me where will we see a real uh, you know growth coming in this uh, since this changes have been done over quarter 1 and quarter 2 you will see this playing out uh, uh, very clearly over next financial year and uh, what we have spoken with the market and probably three quarters back in terms of the growth at that point these calibrations that we have done because we felt um, health as a portfolio which comes with lifetime visibility requires real time calibration so we chose to take that call at this point of time so that the long term uh, valuation that we want for the organization does not get compromised uh, but you will see a convergence as a team not only in terms of growth but also product launches uh, which are still Uh, if you ask us on a score of 10 on product, uh, you know, or solutioning stack that we want to feed on the health side, we would probably be six and a half uh, and thereabouts over 10 uh, as a score. So we have that distance to be covered, and, and that also will get done in next couple of quarters. 
So we are very positive and we do see uh, a good valuation coming uh, uh, from next financial year onwards. Nidesh, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, secondly, on the motor side, sir, our profitability has improved uh, quite well and our loss ratios are tracking uh, one of the best that we have seen. Uh, so why don't uh, we pedal, we push the pedal on the growth and uh, start focusing on market share gains in that segment, even the profitability is quite good for us. Uh, I think, Nidesh, you have only answered the question uh, in terms of a, we, we, were, we stayed focused and we had some losses on market share, but we, uh, we decided to stick the course uh, and that's what we are doing at this point of time. Uh, some of the other partners who were, uh, you know, being aggressive have also cooled down. So it's a combination of we sticking to the course and as I was also stating uh, that December was the first month in which we have seen a relatively better market share. In our mind, uh, we do believe that quarter four should hold good for us as a team. Okay, sir. thank you, sir. thank you. That's just from my side. Thank you, Nitish. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Avinash Singh from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good evening. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, the first one on commercial line, I mean, fire, marine engineering, if I look, uh, on a nine-month basis, uh, the movement YUI in claims ratio is material. Now, uh, in terms of NATCAT, it would have kind of a played out maybe a bit uh, higher this year, but not material. So now just question is that, is this sort of a clearance ratio increase in the commercial line an outcome of, you know, uh, any sort of a pricing uh, deterioration at the industry level, or is it uh, also or largely due to the reinsurance price hike that industry has seen? So, I mean, some color on what is uh, driving this commercial uh, uh, line uh, loss ratio increase. And if the factors that I just mentioned, uh, you know, the pricing deterioration or reinsurance price hike, if they are largely done this year and should improve going forward next year, that's uh, one. Second, again, uh, going on health, uh, you have, I mean, overall growth is reasonably good. Uh, growth is, of course, uh, led by the pricing as well as uh, some kind of a volume growth. Yet, uh, the claims ratio at the aggregate level, of course, if we go segment by segment, there could be you know, some difference here, but at an aggregate level, claims ratio is still inching up. Now, is this uh, an outcome of, you know, just the claims uh, inflation or also, you know, uh, claims frequency also sort of uh, 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 reflecting some kind of a uh, uh, increase year on year? So, two questions. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. so... Uh, Avinash, uh, um, I think uh, on the first one on the commercial lines, uh, pretty much in line with what you mentioned, which is primarily uh, whatever you see as change in the loss ratios, whether it is for fire engineering or some of the key commercial lines, the last part of the change in the loss experience is predominantly driven by the impact that we have seen on account of flood events. Uh, so, so, and this year, unfortunately, if you would have seen, which is what we put out also as a part of the opening transcript, I think the aggregate impact that we have seen on account of various catastrophic events last year was about 28 crores. This year, if you look at nine months, we are already, the number is at about 137 crores. A large part of it is, of course, some of the commercial lines, but maybe the recent Chennai floods, I would also say, we have also got a reasonably large number of claims that is coming on the retail side, which is more on the motor uh, side of the business as well. But to stay with on the commercial lines, I think the a large part of the, uh, the loss ratio change is predominantly driven by the impact that we have seen on account of uh, the various flood events that we have seen and not because of uh, any other reason. In fact, uh, the overall growth in the commercial lines, particularly on fire, has pretty much played out in line with what we have been speaking even in the earlier quarters, as in to say that the price drop consequent to the removal of the IIB rate has been broadly in that range of 5 to 7 percent. And which was largely offset, I would say, by the increase in the reinsurance rates that we had seen at the time of negotiating the program at the beginning of the year. So hence, to that extent is where I think our the growth for the overall market has been largely muted in line with what we spoke even during the April call. Uh, what will happen in the next year's uh, reinsurance renewal program, I think... Uh, 
maybe i think we will be able to come back with a much better insight when we announce numbers on a full year basis in april because at the time when we would have largely concluded the reinsurance placements but otherwise on so far as the attritional losses are concerned i think there is nothing other than like some of the impact on catastrophic losses um, uh, related numbers to your second point on the health loss ratio i think is is pretty much which is why i think in response to one of the earlier uh, earlier questions that had come through is where we are kind of put out the breakdown of the loss ratios uh, so so in that sense there if you clearly see i think the loss ratios are pretty much in line with the range that we are comfortable with which is just to kind of rate rate group health loss ratios we have generally talk, spoken about it being in the range of 94 95% that's the number at which we have ended even the current 9 month numbers and retail health indemnity i think the range that we have spoken about has been between 65 to 70% if, if you would have looked at the 9 month numbers again there pretty much in line with the range that we have spoken about um, of course we do see inflation uh, uh, and let's say possibly at times increase in claim frequency particularly let's say during quarter 2 largely driven by monsoons and other related seasonality but that's something again like what i mentioned on motor where we actively engage in kind of driving the ppn initiatives uh, on the motor side for example we would obviously want to drive a large part of the motor accidents to a preferred network of garages the same thought process is what we have even on the health side which is to kind of we have a separate network management team which significantly looks at focusing on driving a lot more traffic to a preferred network of uh, hospitals where we are not only able to guarantee so far as the policy holders are concerned quality of care which is very very important for us and more importantly an outcome which is let's say a possible reduction in the average claim size and thereby which is how we are able to kind of manage the possible change that we see on inflation slash uh, frequency and but on an overall basis i think we are comfortable at the range at which the loss experience is playing out okay thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Supratim Datta from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is on the new strategy of One Isle One Team. So, could you help me understand what would be the impact on the top line from the strategy, and what would be the would this also have a cost impact in the form of cost savings? That's my first question. My second question is on the reinsurance. so globally if we see the reinsurance rates uh, you know this year at first jan has gone up somewhere between 30 to 50% what are we expecting here in india given f you know cy 23 so on the number of natcat events which were higher than what we had seen in cy 22 so uh, that's my second question and third, lastly i would just like to understand currently that now that you know the growth has returned on the motor side what is the market share that you have now within you know the uh, private car segment or the two wheeler segment and the commercial vehicle segment if you could i think with that that would be all right thank you okay sure so uh, on the uh, one al one team part in terms of the top line as well as the cost i think it will get embedded in our what gopal said the combined issue and what we are able to deliver as a team uh, Uh, we have taken certain initiations in terms of what we have done structurally but it will be early days for us to quantify anything of that uh, to the market you will see that getting exhibited in time to come we believe that we rather do it than announce that this is what we believe uh, will get transpired uh, but clearly what i can assure you is we do believe there is a kicker available as on the top line as well as bottom line on account of what we are pursuing as a team so uh, that's where it is and the reinsurance part uh, i'll ask gopal to just give an update we don't uh, expect the premiums to run away we do have a guideline where we say 5 to 7 7.5% and there about is what you expect to come in but it will all get probably called out in specific over quarter 4 uh, gopal yeah yeah so i think uh, just to kind of uh, suprati suprati uh, i think as i said uh, so this, i think we are in the midst of uh, the negotiations in so far as renewing the reinsurance program is concerned and as i mentioned i think we will be able to give you a much better insight when we kind of announce numbers for the april uh, april call uh, is when we would have stitched in the reinsurance uh, program and the rates for the next year but the initial indication seems to kind of unlike last year where we had seen a significant increase in the cost of reinsurance for protecting the uh, the uh, net retention 
or let's say the actual cost that we have seen for protecting catastrophic uh, event related losses our sense is obviously the hike may not be as much as what we had seen last year exact numbers i think as i said i will come we will be able to come back and give you much better clarity when we announce numbers in april that's on the reinsurance side to your point on uh, market share within let's say the new uh, market share uh, for private car and uh, two wheelers private car we have a market share of roughly about 12% around the, uh, that range and on two wheelers uh, the new market share has been uh, currently in the range of about 22% this of course is slightly lower than what we would have normally had i mean in the past maybe our market share could on the private car side would have been higher by almost about 3-4% and even on two wheeler almost at a similar level i mean would have been we have always been yeah. saying that on on new two wheelers one in four uh, one in four uh, two wheeler sales is a policy a policy of ICC Lombard. So to that extent, this is pretty much in line with what we have seen over the last two years where we have lost a market share. But as Sanjeev indicated, I think the momentum for us as we speak looks to be very, very strong and positive. And which is why if you look at some of the quarter three or month of December numbers, the head start that we are getting into in Q4 and thereafter seems to be very, very positive for us. And that's what we are very optimistic. And hence to that extent, uh, even in the earlier earnings call, if you recollect, what we had said was uh, motor we should see on an aggregate basis growth coming back uh, in line with the market. The early trend seems to indicate that. In fact, for the month of December, just to reiterate, we have actually had an outperformance relative to the industry growth of 8.8%. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to paucity of time, we will now take the last question from the line of Ashish Sharma from Anam Asset Management Company. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, this one question uh, on, on similarly on the combined ratio, uh, given that we are trending better than uh, 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 in terms of improvement in combined ratio. Uh, so, can I mean, if, if as you mentioned, that will take another quarter or so before you would want to change the guidance, but just wondering now, is there a possibility now that uh, the business can operate at uh, a combined ratio of 100% or below? Uh, I mean, uh, given that we are seeing some sort of a... So, uh, I think fair question, Ashish, from your perspective, uh, but I think stand. Uh, one could we'll discuss this early uh, by next quarter as to where we are seeing, because we still want the uh, overall trend uh, coming out in a consolidated way. We don't want to jump the gun, while the early signs do look better for us. But the sort of opportunity that we have, as a company, we will continue to invest. Uh, so I would be very honest uh, that... Uh, Size investment, we can be where we are, but uh, uh, and the industry combined overall is still at 112%. So, you know, there are structural changes, and my firm belief is, which I can share with you, uh, we would love to see industry itself improving in a significant way because uh, today, well, industry is very, very able to perform at X. If the whole industry improves structurally, I don't see any reason why ICS and Lombard can drive far better benefit out of it. So we are operating both at industry level as well as the company level uh, to make an impact. Uh, but uh, for a company like us and the opportunity uh, which I said in my opening remarks again uh, is significant. So we would definitely use some percentage of what comes our way to reinvest uh, to ensure that we are future ready in terms of the opportunity that comes. Uh, would not jump the gun to call out and say 100 is what it is. So it will be a mix of things. Health will continue to seek more investment from us because uh, we have uh, reasonable competition as well as opportunity, you know, being made available to us. Uh, and similarly, on the digital space, we'll continue to do what is required to harness our own uh, ambition of where we want to be. So, with all that in mind. Uh, uh, I don't want to, you know, close out saying that that is what it would be, but uh, let's discuss this when we are there on the April in the call. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, due to paucity of time, that would be the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sanjeev Mantri for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Uh, I think, uh, thanks so much. I think uh, the call has gone beyond the distance, but uh, absolutely enjoy interacting with each one of you and look forward to uh, uh, catching up with each one of you in time to come. Uh, we stay positive and we do believe that we have a great set of uh, colleagues 
operating in a segment with very very extensive experience and we would definitely do what is required to you know add further value to the company uh, in terms of the industry which gives us tremendous opportunity thank you so much and have a great 2024 and see you soon thank you on behalf of ICICI Lombard General Insurance Company Limited that concludes this conference thank you all for joining us you may now disconnect your lines